In this quick start video, we have a really fun project for you, and that is we're going to be creating a peace sign, a multicolored, multi sized stone peace sign. And we're going to be showcasing some tools here in Easy Stone that I think you're going to get a lot of use out of. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to go ahead and grab our ellipse tool here in Corel Draw and drag out a circle, holding our control key down to constrain to a perfect circle. We want to make sure that our lock ratio button is checked because I want my initial circle to be four inches. So four inches in width, four inches in height is what I want to start with. Now we're going to come over here to our stone fill tab and you can see that we have a value here of 3.7. Why? Well the reason we have this value is because it by default will take our stone size and the spacing and that adds those two values together to get our default offset value. Now, you don't have to use that value, but in this case, we want to use that value. So, we're going to go ahead and choose two island fills. So, I hit my up arrow twice. For two island fills, we're going to click Add Stones and hit Island Fill. And what that's going to do, of course, is add stones to these lines that we had. So, our outside line plus the two lines that we created using the Island Fill option are filled with our crystal stones at 3.2 millimeters. Now the center circle here, I'm going to select one of those stones and we're going to change the size and color of that stone. Let's go with Capri Blue, come over here to our stone tab and simply choose add stones again. And you can see all it did was just add those new size stones and recalculated what it needed. Now what we're going to do is select this inner ring of stones and we're going to choose break stones and now all these rather than being applied to that circle you can see all these stones are loose which is what we need now we're going to come over here to our ruler and drag over a guideline and just kind of guess where the center of our circle is and when we get close it's going to snap right to the center now you can see that this stone right here is dead center on our guideline so now we're going to come back over here to our stone fill tab and we're going to use this option right here which is our offset option. Now right now it says it's going to offset at 2.9 and the reason it's offsetting at 2.9 is because of the current size and spacing. But we know that stone is 3.2 millimeters so now we're going to go ahead and choose that offset option and you can see it just offsets that stone the exact amount that 3.7 millimeters and we're going to offset this stone to the left, come back, and to the right. All right, so we have three stones going across right there. And then we're going to do the exact same thing up top here. So we're going to offset down, then we're going to offset to the left, click back on our center stone, and offset to the right. Now what I need to do is I need to create stones in between these lines. I'm actually going to get rid of this guideline. We don't need that anymore. So to do that, I'm going to use this function in Easy Stone, one of my very favorite functions. And I think it's a special function because, to my knowledge, no other software has a similar function. But what I've done is I've taken the top and bottom stone, and I've selected the two. And when I hold my Shift key down and click Add Stones, it will automatically calculate the number of stones I need in between those. And I can do that three times. Shift Add Stones, and lastly, shift add stones. Now just like we did with the outer ring, the center ring here, we're going to change the color and size of that stone. So we're going to go to 2.4 millimeters and we're going to choose add stones again. And you can see it changed that out for us. So that's kind of cool, keeping that uh, multi-colored and multi-sized configuration going. Now the two outside ones we're going to break those apart. So we'll select the right one, break stones, we'll select the left one, we'll choose break stones, and now we're going to create the, the other piece part of our design. So we're going to select a stone here, we're going to hold down our shift key and kind of just eyeball where we want our piece sign to be, and then we'll choose shift add stones. Now what we want to pay attention to is that these two stones are not touching and you can see that they're not touching so that angle is going to work out pretty good for our design so we want to go ahead and do that a couple of more times so we'll go ahead and select that stone and this stone and we'll do shift add stones just like before and the same thing one more time 
shift add stones. So now you can see what we have here. Now again the center one we're going to change its size so we selected a stone along that center one and we'll choose add stones and you can see it went ahead and recalculated that for us. Now all I need to do is take these three lines and just kind of mirror that to the other side. So what we're going to do is select those three lines. I selected one, I held down my shift key and selected the other two. And then I'm going to left click and drag with my mouse and then right click. That will make us a duplicate. And then I'm going to use the mirror option here in CorelDRAW to mirror those horizontally. Okay. And then I can move these around. I can hover over, see where it says node, and then I can drag it right on top of center. And then we know that we have everything lined up just the way we need it. So now it's just a matter of coming here, deleting a few lines, because if I go into my wireframe mode, you can see that we have, remember, all those defined paths that we talked about in our previous video. So let's select the whole kit and caboodle here, choose break stones, select the whole kit and caboodle, come to selections, choose select defined paths, and remember earlier I recommended that we save these defined paths if we ever want to use them in another capacity we have those so let's go ahead and do that let's go back in here to enhance mode so we can see what we want to delete what we might want to change I kind of like the way this looks um, as far as the the lines these different stones so this stone right here I think I'm gonna go ahead and delete that stone and same thing down here let's go ahead and delete this one um, that looks pretty good I think so now what I want to double check for is any stone that is sitting directly on top of another stone so let's go ahead and do that by selecting our entire design and choosing the editing tab and check spacing I always do this for every single design I'm working on I just want to make sure there's no stone on top of another stone um, before I go ahead and go on to the next step here again we have a progress bar that shows us how far along the process is we have a lot of stones 402 stones in this design see that right here it says 402 objects so we had four overlapping objects so we'll go ahead and delete those and again we'll select the whole design right click for no outline on our stones and there is our finished product looks pretty good right so I hope you enjoyed this process of creating this piece symbol completely from scratch it's a great little project to get you started um, and definitely take the time watch the video a couple of times if you don't remember all the steps um, and it doesn't quite work out the first time give it another go but I think you'll find it's a it's a great design and something that you'll actually use time and time again thanks for watching